Hey everybody, welcome back to the 10th floor. It's me, Matt. Hey everybody, it's Kat. And it's Fido Xavier. Fido Xavier's here with us. Hey, Fido. Hey everyone. So fresh off of a 2022 Daytime Directing Team Emmy Award win just a little over a week ago. That's correct. <laughs> One night. Well, congratulations. Congratulations from all of us here on the 10th floor. And once people start joining the chat, I'm sure you're going to get flooded with praise. Thank you. <laughs> so what was, how was the night? Was it, was it awesome? I know it's not your first time winning the Emmy, right? That's correct. But it was really wonderful because we were, you know, we could get together in one room. You know, we haven't had a full Emmy for the, you know, award ceremony for the last two years. Last year, they in, had the actors and they had, um, you know, professional audience members, but we none of the tech crews yeah. or, or, you know, other people could go. And it was great because, you know, I, I've worked on a lot of different shows, so I... It's wonderful to be able to see my friends from other shows in the daytime community. Mm -hmm. Plus, there's a lot of people from talk shows and and uh, you know the uh, View type of type of shows. Yeah, that are, that I saw Drew Barrymore all over Twitter. So <laughs> yeah, it was it was wonderful. I was sitting a couple of rows back from Drew Barrymore. It was exciting. Oh. She looked great. <laughs> Yeah, Drew Mary more irritated me that night, though, because she talked too much at the beginning when she got up there to give the award for the series, and then it got cut off, and we didn't even get to see it. That's oh. annoying. That's annoying. <laughs> annoying for me. Yeah, well, <laughs> it happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then afterward, after after the, uh, the, the because you, you weren't able to give the acceptance. Who, who gave the acceptance speech for the cat? I can't recall. The acceptance speech was given by Allison Reams-Smith, mm -hmm. who is one of our directors. She directed uh, one of last year's submissions, the mm -hmm. Suffragette Show. We, we had, uh, I think, submitted two episodes. One was mine and one was hers last year. Uh -huh. And uh, I gave the acceptance speech that we had to tape inside the Nurses Hub. Okay. And so this year we we wanted Allison to give the speech. Okay, all right, that's nice. Yeah, sharing the love amongst the team, and that that I think that's great. Nobody's really trying to vie for stardom or to be the face of the team or anything like that. That sounds nice. We 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 you know we all have to work together. It's a collaborative medium. Our uh, you know it's a, it's it's like a family, as dysfunctional as it can be at times. <laughs> right. But you know some of us have worked there for you know. 20, 30 years. Leslie Charleston's been on the show for a long time. Jackie Zeman, Ken Schreiner, you know, yeah. and, and so we who come to the show, we, we, it's like being, you know, uh, marrying into a family. It's like marrying yeah. into the mob and especially, you know, Maurice is, is the, uh, is the, is the, the head He's of our mob. The Godfather. Exactly. <laughs> um, that, 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 that totally rings true. Um, to me uh from my experience that we had on the set tour during the gh convention this year uh because we, ah, yeah we, it was great time you, able to see everything there, so. you weren't there for the for when james uh, no we were a day crashed. short of that one. Oh, that's sad it's, it's all good though we had a great time performed a little scene in the boathouse and all of that and that stuff and uh while they let us roam free and basically uh not be able to steal because everything's taped down um <laughs> We had a chance to talk to uh, one of the props props guys. I think his name is Matt as well. Uh, and he was essentially born in that studio. So ah, <laughs> when it right. comes down to it, yeah, um, every, it, from props to directing to acting, uh, the, the family is there. People have been there for a very long time. And to me, I think it shows uh, in the final product. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because I realized that I've spent my entire working life living in fantasy uh, you know, towns. I've, I've lived in the fantasy town of Springfield, USA, which is a guiding light. I've lived in the fantasy town of Harmony, which is where passions took place. I've lived in Genoa City. I've lived in, you know, and now I live in Port Charles. And it's, and, and I know more about what happened to Carly than I do sometimes my own sister and uh, her children. <laughs> well, according to Twitter, you guys don't remember anything. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we have blanket amnesia. <laughs> uh, which, uh, you know, um, um, recently, um, Laura has been through a lot. 
the character Laura, not La not Laura Wright, our, one of our favorite actresses on the show, but Laura the character, Laura Collins. Um, and what I really appreciated was the um, immense amount, amount of knowledge and respect that was given to the past of Laura, especially her origins. When they tied Martin and Cyrus into her past in such a incredible way. I don't know how much of that you were able to work on, um, but I recall their... their their big coming to Jesus scene, essentially over their the mom <laughs> in the bed, and it was just the three siblings just discovering the depth of their history with each other. And that was a wonderful scene. It was. Uh, I I did get to direct that scene. Oh everyone... oh oh my God! Yes. Okay. So uh, I'm just gonna say that all of my favorite GH moments are yours. <laughs> <laughs> you could just you could just say that right I'll now. Just say that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm just a, incredible. A current GH. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, working with Jeff, Michael Knight, and Jeannie Francis in a scene full of emotional history, it was just, it was, uh, it was pretty, two, um... Two daytime legends and someone that is not going to be quickly forgotten. Right? Absolutely. I mean, and, and, and uh, he gave as good as he got. I mean, the, the thing is, when someone comes from other day parts to work in daytime, they often don't realize how quickly we work. Mm -hmm. and how much you have to be on your toes. And there are some people that are incredibly great actors who come and they just really can't hack it. And Jeff took to it, he, he loved it. And, and he was fearless. And the great thing about a scene like that is that very often the director has to ask the, the actors to do very specific things because we work very quickly and the cameramen need to know the shots. But there are times when you just want to say, hey, what what do you want to do? What mm -hmm. what what do you think would work for the scene? Or the actors have a, a, a suggestion that makes the scene, you know, twice as good as it would have been if we had just simply implemented the original plan. So they they really brought a lot to that scene. That's awesome. Oh man, good. I just feel good. I feel I good. I think I don't think Jeff Cover has a bigger fan than Matthew. <laughs> uh. Oh my goodness. I've, I've really enjoyed him. I, I think Cyrus Renault has been a, a, a very compelling character. And I think Jeff Kober has just been, I don't even know the right word to attest to his, to what he's brought to my life. Yeah. I mean, he brings, he, he's, he's incredible. I, even the, you know, the scene that I think he used as his Emmy reel, which was in the house a after he was holding Trina hostage. Where he's the wounded uh, little boy with the dangling hair. Yeah. When he had the long hair, I mean, yeah. And and Jeannie, you know, you put Jeannie with Jeff, and they're both so emotional and such in you know such deep actors, and they were beyond in the moment that when we were taping those scenes, and and it was you know in the booth you kind of catch your breath and you you don't even really want to uh, speak after a scene like that because it's it it goes deeper than even the dress rehearsal or the mm -hmm. blocking, you know. I mean, it resonates uh, with, with the fans who are engaged with the story, um, the people who are invested in what you guys have put on screen for us to enjoy. Uh, and to see that conclusion, you know, uh, of, of Cyrus's entire arc before being carted off to cr prison and just this epic confrontation and um, everything that everybody brought to that was was just awesome. It, it's interesting because, you know, the the most recent episode that we taped uh, with Cyrus was the 15,000th episode. Yes. And he had one scene in that episode with Jeannie and the scene was written slightly differently. Okay. And um, I, I, you know, we, we worked very closely with Jeannie before we did that episode to just kind of iron out mm -hmm. things that maybe would, would be, would make the show more emotional. You know, that, that episode was essentially written about politics. It was essentially yeah. written about, you know, Laura's in danger of, uh, you know, being recalled. And we thought that that, and it was a great hook to hang the episode on, but at the same time, Laura is an emotional character. We wanted something emotional to happen in that show. Mm -hmm. And so when we got to that scene, she said at the end, I, I really, I, you know, the, the, the original end of that scene was a slightly saltier exchange. And she just said, I want to just say, I, I forgive you to mm -hmm. him. And, and it was so interesting. And it really, cause he, the, the, he just brought so much to that scene. And when she said that it kind of deflated everything from his, from his character's point of view. And it was just really an interesting moment. And I think a, a, a great way to, 
you know, put a little period at the end of that phase of Cyrus's story. Yeah, you know, it, it definitely made me very curious to see what's going to be coming next with Cyrus, uh, with uh, what's been sprinkled through his last couple of scenes with his his finding of God. Um, and we would love to... We would love to see what's going to happen with him as well, and 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 into this forgiveness uh, part with uh, with Laura, which oh my, what a home run! What a home run! You were talking about trying to hang it off of a of a political uh, coat hook, uh, but to me, it was off of that moment itself. Like that was the fifteen thousandth moment of General Hospital, in my opinion. And and what's what was beautiful about that show for me was that it was really a kind of celebration of the community of Port Charles and the idea of a soap opera as telling the story of a town, which we all can relate to. And, and not everyone, you know, some people don't have a wide social life. And, and I think soap opera can, can be a companion as well as an informative uh, genre. Plus I personally, when I started watching soap operas in high school, I just liked the continuing story of it. I liked the fact that you could follow characters and, and get really deeply in, into the different psychological aspects of them. And I thought that Laura's speech at the end of the show and the whole montage at the end was really a, a telling of the, the rich tapestry mm -hmm. of daytime soap opera in general, you know, and specifically. Oh, so much passion, so much passion. <laughs> it requires it. It requires the passion, I think, uh, especially in daytime where there's not a lot of, um, I mean, the, of course, the audience just showers you with praise. Um, <laughs> uh, but when it comes down to it, um, <laughs> you know, just generally speaking, not a lot of people are like, hey, let's go see what's coming on the stories today. Um, it's hard to grasp those new eyes and those those new uh, that new audience. And so bringing the passion that you have every day onto set, I think, is required in order for you to... Um, Continue to love your days. I don't know. I'm assuming. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, Ma, what what do you think? You got you got you got, you got any uh, got any hot topic buzzing questions for our friend Fido here? <laughs> she got them all up before we hit the broadcast. Something <laughs> <laughs> will come up. I no, not 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 right this moment. She was engaged in our our artful debate and conversation. Um, well, there were from the from the uh, the uh, chat here. Jacarius wanted to know. Jacarius Naylor, hello, Jacarius. Um, what has been some of your favorite moments? I know we've we've talked about some of the ones that have been happening with Cyrus, but um, I mean, I'm sure there's a thousand to list and to mention. But you know, over a 2022, what you have done this year, fifteen thousandth well, episode, and then I, I think I'd I'd rather go a little back. And, oh, yeah. and tell you, I mean, when I, I joined General, Ho I did one episode in General Ho of General Hospital in about 2001. Mm -hmm. And it was one episode where Luke was with Felicia and, and um, Roy had just come back to town played by A. Martinez. And um, it was it was a fun scene with a character named Chloe and Jax and Alexis and Ned. And then I never worked there again. The, <laughs> the producers did not love me. Um, and then I came back in 2007 under a different regime mm -hmm. and uh, be began uh, sort of filling in for a director who was on a leave of absence. And, but slowly, and, I, and at that time in 2007, I was working with, uh, I was working at Young and Restless and General Hospital simultaneously. Oh. And so eventually I got the opportunity to stay with General Hospital full time. And I think I loved the show. I loved all of it. But but for me, the the mob era of General Hospital was not my favorite. Mm -hmm. My favorite was really the classic Cassadine and Cassadine Island and, and uh, Luke and Laura on the run and and maybe the, the Gloria Monti era. Uh -huh. So when Ron Carlovati came to write the show, and he was bringing back a little bit more of the campy quality of, of General Hospital with a little more humor. And so, so to answer the question, one of my favorite things was to have the opportunity to work with Heather, the character of Heather. Heather Webb. For me, that's oh, one of my Crazy favorite Heather, things. she's wonderful. <laughs> I just love Crazy Heather. I got to do some wonderful scenes with Crazy Heather. Um, working, with, working with Tracy Quartermain, was incredible. I got to do, I mean, right when I started there, I, I did one of the last ghost scenes of Alan. Oh, um, working oh. with 
working with legacy characters, working with yeah. Jackie Zeman, Kim Schreiner, you know, Leslie Charlson, uh, John Ingle, working with, um, uh, oh God, I mean, just the they're, list they're goes all, on. The list goes on. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. You know, so, that, so that was fun. I think an, another thing that was my favorite was when we brought the nurse's ball back Ugh. and I got to do some nurse's ball. We miss it desperately here on the 10th floor. One year, I suggested that we do the open. I, I was lazy and I did not want to do the opening number in the ballroom because it's harder to shoot. Okay. And La La Land had just come out. And I said, couldn't we do the opening number in the hospital set? Couldn't we just have it be like they pre-filmed it in the hospital set? And then we do like two minutes of dancing around on the on the hub and yeah. have, you know, coming out of the elevator, going down the stairs, whatever. And then have them burst into the ballroom. And I, I thought that was a dynamic way to start the nurses ball one year. So that was a favorite uh, idea that I had that they let me run with. Shooting shooting yeah. on the hospital set. Is that an adventure? Because <laughs> we, we were able to... Set. Like, so the permanent actual hospital set that was, that was there. Um, and now that I've actually seen the setup, I can be like, okay, well, there's that corner and this is that little nook and all of that kind of yeah. stuff. Um so how is is that built with uh, with all of that in mind or do you guys have to find these little places to 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 shoot in this massive place well for years the round hospital set the original mm -hmm. the nurse jesse hospital set yeah mm -hmm. you know i mean you know jesse of the 80s well, I, I should say the amy vining era hospital mm. set was in uh was in one corner of the studio and then that was always there. And then they decided to spin off Night Shift. Yes. And the second season of Night Shift was going to take place in a different studio. So they had to build a new set for this second series of Night Shift in a totally different studio. Because uh, originally the first Night Shift was, on, was, was taped in the same studio. So once they built this new set for Night Shift season two, it was a really nice set, which is, it's essentially very similar to the one that you see now. Yeah. And they decided that they were going to bring that into our prospect studios and get rid of the circular or eighties mm -hmm. hub, um, which I'm sort of sad that, that we got rid of the eighties hub, but it was not as easy to shoot. And there weren't as many places that you could position people. Yeah. This new set was definitely designed to be able to stay there and offer you a lot of opportunities, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, we can be up on the platform of the stairs, but not really because you would see the top of the set too much, but you can do a few things up on the stairs. You can be in an elevator. Yeah. One day I did a trick shot where someone came out of the other elevator. It was Anna was coming out of the elevator at the same time that, that uh, Violet was coming out of the elevator. And um, I really wanted both elevators to work, but we had to, do a special thing with that because as you may have noticed only one of the elevators actually works right and the other elevator houses the gears to open up the first elevator <laughs> oh. so there's no way to make that happen no unless you unless you do like a split screen a split screen a, a a stewart and adam situation from all my children. exactly exactly <laughs> exactly or as we like to say Alex and Anna. Alex and Anna, of course, of course. Oh, my I God. will say that I first worked with Fanola on All My Children when she was playing Alex, mm -hmm. the good doctor. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, what a, what a transition for the character <laughs> from All My Children to General Hospital. But ultimately, exactly. I think you guys made it work, tying it into the Peter memory swap, and I gave you that to protect him, and you didn't, so now I'm pissed at you. Uh, I thought that was just brilliant. Brilliant. So thank you, Fido, for telling the writers to write that. But there you go. But you have to understand on a show where you can store someone's brain in a flash drive, you know, and people can be routinely brought back from the dead through the Cassidyne cryogenics laboratories. Right. You know, we're, I, I always say that we that Port Charles is in a parallel alternate universe. Yes. Yes. This is not the real world, folks. This is not no. this is not and, here. And <laughs> exactly. When we when we hear fans um, complain about something like that. It's like, come on now, there's a weather machine there. Give us a machine. <laughs> Speaking of weather machines, you know how you like that Cassidyne nonsense. I feel like Victor's up to some Cassidyne, classic Cassidyne nonsense. 
I, I really do. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And Charles Shaughnessy, what a get. What Charles a get. Charles Shaughnessy is, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm always amazed at the casting on the show. We just get wonderful people, I think, very often. Kathleen Gotti was great yes. as, as Dr. Obrecht. Charles Shaughnessy, guess. Charles Shaughnessy, I worship at the feet of Charles Shaughnessy. When he came on the show, he's so he's such a great victor. Now, nothing against Teo, because Teo was was a great victor too. But he's more heavily involved in days. So mm -hmm. you know, we we I, we we drew a, a wonderful bonus by by getting Charles. And I I I think there's so much potential for that character. Oh, I I we love him. We love him. <laughs> Where'd you on, pick up man. that accent, Victor? I worked very hard on it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I enjoyed that scene. I got to do that scene too. Oh, my, see, course, like I said, all of my favorite moments. Any scene with Ava Jerome, I'm gonna love that scene. <sighs> she's one of my. She's one of my favorites. But I have to say, my very favorite female character on the show is Diane. I love Diane. She does. Oh. Well, I will tell her that because I, I am a, a friend of Diane's and and, and uh, I, I'm a big fan of Diane's as well. Yeah, I just I just she's just so assertive and just so sassy and so smart. I, I just she's not even afraid of Sonny. I love her. Right, exactly. <laughs> How long does it take to put the set back together after she chews up all that scenery? It's it's hard. You know, we we we. we we try to keep the praying mantises out, but you know they will chew. You know, <laughs> she digests it, and it comes out as good as new. Oh man, oh man! I mean, you, you, you're so lucky, Fido. Just t just take it from me, from some regular person that just makes sure that water filters can get from point A to point B. You're living yeah. a life, man. Oh my goodness. Well, it's true. Although I, I will say that you know this 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 is my pile of of paperwork that I I had for the last two months, and <laughs> it takes a while to 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 prepare one of these. So whenever I I go in and and uh, you know this is my script with all my notes. Yeah. You know, and, and particularly when you see a page, a horrible page, like, uh, like just to give you an example, this, this is this is the 15,000th episode. And the, these are the list of shots for, oh, for, for one of the scenes. Oh, for one of the scenes. Yeah, this, this is uh, this is the, the 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 montage at the end. OK. And the script says, uh, what does the script say? Uh, let me see. Oh, I, 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 I don't know. I'll, it, it didn't even give dialogue for the scenes. It just said, <laughs> it said, it said, um, wait a minute. Sorry for this. It just says montage, bunch of scenes, 80s to present. It says, if possible, we hear, we hear music underneath Laura's speech. We, f we uh, feature vignettes, which may include Michael congratulating Carly on her play in the game. Nina explaining a finer point in softball to Victor, interrupted by Lucy. Kevin Mack and Felicia as Mack defends an unforced error. I mean, it's it's like it's so you, specific. You, well, it's specific, but at the same time, it gives no dialogue. Right. You know, <laughs> it's entirely up to us to say, well, okay, just do a scene about this. You know? Right, right. Well, it's not like, hey guys, just go stand out there and talk. We're gonna move the camera around. But like, and these people are talking about a forced error, and then the Cassidines won the game, but nobody really. Yes. Oh, and, and I, I, but after the shoot was over, I asked the costume designer if I could have one of the Cassidyne industry caps. Yeah. And he did give it to me. So, but that's just a secret. Don't oh. tell well, that's cool. <laughs> so I'm curious. So from the time you get a script to the point where you've directed it and it's done, how, how long is that? Is that weeks? Is it days? What is it? Well, the way it works is that the writers write, uh, they, they write what, what are called thrusts. And they say, they're thrusts of what's gonna happen in the week. And they present those to the producer, Frank Valentini and the network. And then they have a meeting on these thrusts where they discuss, yes, proceed with that. Don't proceed with you know that story. We wanna go this way. Then the writers will write the outlines and the outlines are discussed by the producers and the uh, technical people who might say, well, we can't do that, we can do this, and the network. Those are turned into scripts. Those scripts are then 
broken down and figured out as to what day can we shoot each of these scenes? When are the actors available? When are the sets up? How can we break this down? And then they're all put on boards into different days of the week. And then the directors are assigned to the episodes that the producers would like each of us to direct. And as a result of that, we're told, well, your episode is being done on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So those are the days you'll work. After we get the assignment, we then have a meeting. So I get my assignment. I, I get copies of the, the draft scripts and I go read them, go to a meeting on Thursday. After that meeting, all the notes that came out of that meeting are implemented and put into the edited script, which comes out the following week. And then that script is typed up, cleaned up and given to me. And then I prepare my script that week and the week after we tape it. So essentially it's three weeks in which I have the meeting, we get the script to work on and then we tape it. But you have to understand that that happens continually. So I always have three scripts in my mind. I have the script that I'm taping this week, the script that I'm working on for next week, and the script that I'm reading for the meeting on Thursday. So there's <laughs> all, there's a never ending thing that happens. And in certain cases, I'll be doing two episodes in a week because we, have, we, we don't work every week. We do yeah. essentially 15 shows in 10 days. So we, we take every third week off. We, get, we gather up time so that we can have little hiatuses and, and, and breaks. My goodness. So it's a That's whirlwind not, of work I and then like, time okay. for anything else in your life. I don't have time for anything else in my that, life. That's, that's why he got his band on General Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. That was a lovely, a lovely thing. But yeah, no, I, I mean, it's during the breaks that I, that I can have a life. Now, I, um, I'm just very, I love my work. It's, it's very absorbing. You know, I, I sometimes, when I work on my scripts, I like to have something on in the background that isn't too distracting. So I'll put on a podcast or a television show that's very, very, very simple. Currently I'm binging the television series Dynasty hey. while I prep my scripts, but that's how I discovered your uh, podcast because I was searching for general hospital podcasts and that came on and it was, you know, an hour and 20 minutes. I was like, oh, let me put this on in the background. And I could listen to people discussing the show and hey. it was fun and lively. And, and that's- yeah, uh, Thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, when you were potential Fido three weeks ago, we loved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is, it was funny because I, I, had, I had gotten up and I, I, I saw YouTube. I saw that you guys were live. I'm like, oh, what are they talking about? And then I saw that there was a live chat and I thought I would say hello and chat. <laughs> And then I was wondering, would anyone notice that I was there? And then you you were like, oh, well, there's someone here who seems to be pretending to be the director. <laughs> <laughs> I just had it in my mind, like someone is like, okay, I'm going to aim for somebody that's not like, I'm not going to go in there and say, hey, I'm Michael E. Knight. You know, that's right. too obvious. But let me say that I'm like one of the directors. People will think that's true. <laughs> well, and then I and then I saw that you were going to interview Ken, and Ken is one of my favorite people. So I had to come and you know give him some grief. Ken Schreiner, Scotty Baldwin, legend upon legend upon legend, uh, and yeah. and so fun. Like at at the GH convention, just uh, one of my favorite Q and As was the one that that Ken did, and of course he was on the show, and uh, just the depth of the person that is He's Ken fine. Schreiner. He's funny. I love him. It's great. A great guy. I mean, there, there's really no one. I, I, it's funny because I've worked with, I've worked on a lot of shows. I've worked with a, a lot of the producers I work with now have, have worked with me on various different shows in the past. And there's very few actors that I've ever genuinely not liked. I mean, there, and even there's even one actor that I used to, I, I'm sort of known for hating who I like as a person, but I did, we just did not get along when he was on the show that we worked on. Um, and there's, there's really only one or two people that I've ever not liked. I mean, I just love actors and, and I'm, I'm a fan of soap opera. So when I get to work with someone that I admire, it's, it's even, it's even better, you know? Oh, oh. Like, can we like, I just, can I be you? Can I just become 
<laughs> I mean, you know, going, going back to Stuart and Adam, you know, I got to work with David Canary yeah. playing both Stuart and Adam, uh -huh. you know, and that was amazing. It just, oh I, my I, gosh. You know. So yeah. you worked on All My Children as well? I worked, I, I did, I, I did about six months as a guest on All My Children. And it was in, I guess, like 2000, I think it was like 2000, maybe. Um, I got to work with Finola on the show. I got to work with Susan Lucci. And I, the nice thing about Susan Lucci was that I had been working with her daughter on Passions, Liza. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I got to, um, you know, I, Susan liked me because Liza liked me. And you know, I got to work with Vince Arizari. I worked with Vince Arizari on Guiding Light, All My Children, and The Young and the Restless. So, you know, you go from show to show and you meet people, you know, in, in different places. Um, and it, it's just, it's wonderful. It's, it's ironic because right now I'm watching Dynasty and Michael Nader was on Dynasty, but I had worked with him on All My Children well after he was off Dynasty. Now mm -hmm. I'm going back and sort of seeing him on the show that he had, you know, been mostly known for. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, just to give you very quickly my history, I was a student in college and I worked on the soap opera Another World as a student intern. Then I got out of college, got an entry-level job at Guiding Light. I was there for nine years. After that, I went to One Life to Live for a year and a half. I, while there, I did a little bit of guest associate directing on All My Children. I then moved to Los Angeles to work on a show called Sunset Beach, which I, I was on from the beginning. I was there for two years, and then I went back to New York and freelanced at Guiding Light, As the World Turns, Another World, and One Life to Live and all my children. Did I say all my children? Uh, and then I came back to Los Angeles to work on Passions, as well as an MTV soap opera called Spider Games. And I was on Passions for most of its entire run until it was canceled. And then I had an opportunity to go work at Young and Restless. And then General Hospital also contacted me. And I was working at YNR and GH for a year simultaneously. And then ultimately, had the opportunity to stay at General Hospital. So you, you've you been writing the soap merry-go-round your whole career. It's true. I mean, I did one day at Days of Our Lives, and I've never had the opportunity to work at Bold and Beautiful, and I, I would love to do that as well. That's awesome. <laughs> well, you can't leave General Hospital to do that. No, you know, you're too responsible <laughs> for my enjoyment. I would never leave General Hospital. <laughs> Good. We don't want to do <laughs> Unless I fell down the elevator into the Cassidyne, you know, a classic basement. Diana Mulder moment. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No. Can't, I, I, you know, it's true. Uh, uh, all right. Well, hey, speaking of classic soap deaths, which ones have you been directing? Whose death have you directed? Whose death did I? Well, I killed Silas, the this, the second okay. Michael Easton character okay. on, on General Hospital. Okay. I also, you know, Michael been to bed with all his girls. Oh goodness! <laughs> it's true, it's true. I, I mean, who did I kill? I mean, most of the people that I killed don't end up dead, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I was, I was on a brief break when, J when the most recent Jason death occurred, so I was mm -hmm. unable to be there to kill Jason. I did kill Peter August twice. Twice, but, but the, 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 did you? Peter you... August in the stairwell, uh -huh. and I killed Peter August in the embankment. So okay. that's that's got to count for something, right? Okay. So, oh my god! So his final death. His final death. <laughs> so far. <laughs> oh, exactly. The, the scene. Last the scene with Wes and Finola when when he's dying and she's holding his hand, and that th and he realizes she didn't call the ambulance. Oh my gosh! Was that great? <laughs> So good. <laughs> so one one of two things is true. Either they give you all of the best moments that they have written, or you take all of these moments and turn them into the best. Well, no, quite honestly, the moments are the moments, and I just have the privilege of, of directing them. You know, they they I, I do get a lot of great scripts. It, it's true, um, and uh, I'm I'm fortunate for that. But as we know, if it ain't on the page. It ain't on the stage, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's the truth. You know, the, it all comes from the writing and then it comes from the acting. Yeah. My job is to point cameras 
and, 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 and not get in the way. I think that's the audience my, my, wants to see it from this angle. My job is to not put anything between the audience and the emotion. And what's great about daytime, I mean, sometimes soap, soap operas are very often lambasted for our, our silly way of, of you know, close-ups and zooms in. But really what it's about is the subtext and wanting to feel like we really can see into the hearts of these characters. So all those close-ups and all, all of the staging is a way to tell the story. Really, really the camera work, you know, we have a great crew, but, but the ideas and, and the staging and the camera is essentially what I do to direct because I don't really tell the actors. I mean, sometimes I, I might tell an actor about a story, an element of the story coming up and that could inform their choices. But ultimately the only way I can direct is to stage and to tell the cameras what the shot is. Mm -hmm. And the, the hope is that that is a way to bring the audience. As you said, I think you said it before we start, but I'm, I'm, I'm the audience's eyes on the show. Yeah. And we guide the, the, the way that people look at the story. And so it is definitely in, influencing it, but it's pretty much, I'm just there to capture what's happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I mean, uh, I think when it comes to the style of soap directing and you, you mentioned, um, you know, the close-ups and, and really getting into the depth of these people and, and, and jumping into their bodies, essentially, um, I think that's that's why we, we love it so much. That's why we grow so attached to these characters is because we are literally so close to them with the camera. We're with them five days a week. We're there for pretty much all of the major beats of their life, all of yeah. at least the most dramatic beats of their life. We're not there necessarily every time they're having cereal in Elizabeth's house, but if there's a it's dramatic true. conversation happening, then Dag Nabbit, we're there over there in bowls of, of Lucky Charms, off-brand Lucky Charms. Uh. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so yes, if, if, if you if you if you ever notice the names of the alcohol at the Metrocorp bar, all those bottles with you know, it was definite one vodka letters, was one slightly that I different. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got to see that actually. We didn't get to go to the Metrocorp bar, but the Savoy was up when we were there, so we got to see all that. Exactly. What a Very cool. great job. Other than those loud stairs, that Savoy is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what about the what about the elevator in the Metro Court restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like an elephant it, every time. It, <laughs> you know, I haven't really clocked that one, but I, I definitely heard somebody clonking down the Savoy stairs. It was I would want to say in the last two weeks. Just it was. Might have been I, TJ yeah. just bonk, we bonk, did. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Yeah, we did hear somebody <laughs> clunking down the steps. I noticed it too, Matt. And you know, because we did go on the strike tour. We, we recognize these things, you know, it's like, it's, it's super fun, it's super fun. And you know what, there's only so much that we can do to prevent, to prevent some of these things. This is, this is what it is, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so where, where do I send my resume to, you know, um, start <laughs> <laughs> my Prospect. entry level job with General Hospital? There you go. <laughs> Disney, HR, Kara. <laughs> and and it's just an index house. card that says Fido said it's okay. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh let's see here. Uh let's let's go through the I've barely been paying attention to the chat because I've just been talking to, to Emmy Award winning director Fido Xavier. Emmy in the background there. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. What year is that one from? This one. This one is from 2000, oh, I can't even see. Oh. <laughs> it says, oh, 2010, 2010? 2009 to 2010. Okay. Oh, cool. Do you remember yeah, what, uh, what when awesome. you were directing in 09, 010 that uh, might well, have won that? What I will say is that 09, 010 <laughs> yeah. was not a year that my directing was particularly featured on the show. Uh, okay. I was newer to the show at that time. And when you win as part of a team, sometimes you don't really feel that connected to the award. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people say, oh my gosh, you have an Emmy. And I'll say, uh, yeah, because I was part of the team, but I don't really feel a connection to it. So I would say that that Emmy is not an Emmy close to my heart right. as much as the most recent Emmys, because the last three years I, I have 
had some involvement with the show more more so mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. i think i think one of the you know the, one year we had the live show that was one of the submissions and that was an incredible process to go through and this year i had the alexis episode as well as a lot of stuff we taped on the roof all of my favorite all of my favorite gh moments are under fido's watch (laughs) and so that loves 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 her episode how many times you watch it matt oh i don't know several when it was on (laughs) the alexis episode yeah and then that that final moment um i i uh of of her confronting her younger self in the uh the psych in the psychological office with kevin tears of course and then also the way that you uh that you the show you uh general hospital you uh was able to take alexis and then take those three qualities about her and then use them to describe her kids was beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Was beautiful. Yeah, that they they the writers did a great job with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They, they wrote a beautiful episode and and I thought that we needed something special in that episode beyond just having flashbacks to the original story. So I had suggested that we should have the little girl be in the psychiatry session with Alexis mm-hmm. out of the corner of her eye where she didn't really want to see her, didn't want to acknowledge her, but that that little girl would be there the whole time. And at one point, I don't know if you remember, but I, I have Alexis get up from her chair and walk over to the desk to yell at Kevin about bringing up daddy issues and thereby turning her back yeah. on the little girl. And so it was, it was, and it all built to this final moment. And since I had the little girl in the office, Nancy felt very strongly, and I, I agreed that she needed to talk to the little girl, mm-hmm. and she needed to be able to go and, and tell her that it wasn't her fault and everything was okay. And that was where, you know, the, the collaboration between the actor, the director, and the writers came, came really in, in a wonderful symbiosis because they, they allowed us to change the script slightly and put that moment in. And I think, and I, and I was crying watching it and I feel that you don't even have to know anything about General Hospital to watch that episode because it's a very timeless episode and you can put in whatever trauma whatever experience you had and and that episode works you know yeah yeah and in, in those uh, those flashbacks we had um uh, current GH actors playing older characters like am I am I am I misremembering it we have somebody playing her dad um I- Actually, there was an actor playing her dad, an actor playing her mom. They okay. were not current okay. GH people. Okay, I was. I'm. I'm. Fla- I'm, I'm confused with Nell Flash. Kind of of, of of the the um the Tony Geary episode. Yeah. And or the Suffragette episode. There's that one. Yeah. And we have also... done that. Or, or the or the Christmas or... Carol even. Oh, the Christmas Carol. Let's do something fun this year, Christmas GH. Let's Carol. let's do a Christmas Carol. Let's 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 have a Christmas time nurses ball. Let's do something fun. <laughs> I love the idea of first time nurses. That would be nice. Yeah, it would be great. It would. We're. Be we're I, I'm. I'm sort of hoping that we don't think about the nurses' ball for just a little while. A little while. We need a break just from a it. It's, it's challenging. I just. I just would love to not think about it for just a tiny little while. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. I'll, or, I'll give you that. I, you know what? Honestly, I would love to have a nurses' ball where we never saw the musical acts, where we just <laughs> ha- We said that it was happening. But all the activity was happening around it. <laughs> you could just hear muffled music kind of in the background as yeah. people's throats are getting like slashed the year that, stage. Like the year that Blackie was on the nurse's ball. <laughs> he, he was introduced and then we came back from the cat commercial and Lucy said, thank you, Blackie. You know? That actually would be um, a lot of fun. I think people would really that enjoy that. <laughs> and then, but then you have to give one, one number to Kathleen Gotti, just one. Just, just have exactly. her close it out. Yeah, <laughs> she does the best numbers. It's true. She sincerely does. Um, well, there's Kathleen Gotti, and then there's there's Ava. Ava is also great as well. I, I remember working <laughs> on Dr. Obrecht's first scene that I, I had. She had been in the show once before, mm-hmm. and then I had a scene with her, and she was in Duke's apartment when we knew that he wasn't really Duke. And he was yelling at her and I thought, oh my gosh, this actress is very interesting. And then the next day she was passing out flyers 
looking for her daughter or something and she was wearing a hat and it was uh and we revealed that she was there and they they just the writers recognized that she was a character worth keeping and look at this now she's she's a no, no one wants Dr. Obrecht to go, as far as I can see. No, no, everybody oh. loves Dr. Obrecht, especially uh, recently, uh, pairing her up with Scotty has been, you know, who, who, the, the, the super couple who find themselves after, you know, their kids have grown. I'm, I'm into it. I'm into it. You know, we don't have to have the, the, the TJ and Molly super couple. No, move aside. Move aside, TJ and Molly. We've got Obrecht and Scotty right here. <laughs> I, I, I wonder, I don't know what Ken told you about that <laughs> but i will say that it's fun working with them because they have po probably the two most opposite acting styles of anyone on the show <laughs> in the well, sense you know, that kathleen studies st kathleen really dissects she if you look at her script it looks like the diagram from uh russell crowe in a beautiful mind <laughs> right it's <laughs> it's like full of notes and every moment and she just wants very very specific and Ken is like, ah, you know, we're going to just, I'm going to, I might say this, I might say that, yeah. I, you know, we're keeping it loose. We, we want spont spontaneity. <laughs> yeah, and it's fun to, to see them, you know, have to negotiate each other and find the common ground. It makes sense. It makes sense. We've had uh, both of them on the show uh, independently of each other. Kathleen Gotti was our first uh, guest. You're our most recent. Before that, we had Ken Schreiner. And yeah, I mean, she she talked about how she, you know, comes from this 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 movie background and 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 Hungary and all and all these places where uh, diving deep into these characters is is the bread and butter of her experience and just loves to just devour this content. And Ken's like, yeah, yeah I'm not going to perform until the cat until the camera's on uh exactly you know, uh, exactly. You know we, we could read some lines but uh, what, what's you it, no <laughs> it's true it's true so fire oh alert. man what a good about, time I about a little bit so this is what i this is what i'd like to see you know that crying person that was on creek on the island creek crying woman that they we've not addressed yet who it is yeah, I want that to be Alexis's mama. She's not dead. They've been holding her all these years. <laughs> that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, let, let's push for all kinds of just Cassidy nonsense on General Hospital. And yeah. then we also need the Quartermains leaning up against that door a little more often, trying to listen <laughs> to the conversation in the den. I, I miss those <laughs> moments. That's true. They have a lot of conversations in that den that people are very respectful of. I mean, they could learn a lot. <laughs> A lot of information. We have a fun quarter main, uh, a quarter main a couple of days coming up soon. That, Nola that has I left the building. Enjoy, exactly. Uh, oh, so, did she fall? Yeah. <laughs> she fell my, Anna, uh, my Anna headshot has fallen off the wall. Uh, oh, yeah, those are nice headshots. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I guess, I don't know. Vanilla had to go home. Sorry. Well, she didn't. She didn't like all this talk about Cassidines. I, I guess not. Even though she's she's trying to hook up with one. Uh, well, yeah, she really. Yeah. Well, a little bit yeah. cat and mouse there. We could still find out that um, that uh, Victor's not really his dad. It could happen. Yeah. It, it could happen. It could course. happen. It won't happen. Yeah, it could happen. But it will. But it won't. But it'll. But maybe it will. Maybe it'll. Maybe it will in three years. Maybe it will in six months. We don't know. This is General Hospital. This is soap operas. Anything can happen at any time. It's always funny when we get the uh, oh, so and so is the whatever, or this is this is the way it is, and then five weeks later we're told, actually no, it's not. <laughs> so, you know, for 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 many many months it was like Willow is Nina's daughter. Willow is Nina's daughter. Willow is Nina's daughter. And then it was like oh no, she's not her daughter. It's really, it's really Sasha. And then that's like, no, it's not Sasha. It's actually Nell, you know? Well, Matt and I had that whole twin thing down a year ago. We well, knew it a year have, ago. You must have given that idea to the writers because I, 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 uh, I'm not 100% confident it's that that It's based off was... of the one moment that made it to air when Willow was supposed to be Nina's daughter before she wasn't her daughter, before she was her daughter again. And it was when uh, Nina <laughs> Did she was... she have the necklace? She was looking at the necklace in her office, and then Willow comes in and goes, oh, 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 no, I just recognize the necklace. It's not a big deal. And then gets to business. Uh, and then they never, ever talked about that moment ever again. And then I'm like, oh, never. well, twins, of course. Yeah. Half heart doesn't we'll mean... Out. 
half of N Nina's heart is with Nell. No, no, no. One half of Nina's heart is with this daughter, and the other half of Nina's heart is with that daughter. Duh. <laughs> well, we'll find out that the, that it was a three-sided heart necklace. That yes. Was <laughs> Sasha's in in it the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and we based on this past week, you know, Willow's pregnant, but that's that's not her health crisis. She got something else going on, and her mom Nina is going to have to save her with something. Could happen. See, Could happen. already knows. Because he's working on the <laughs> script that's going to be shot three weeks from now, right Let's now. And... Which one is that? <laughs> and he's had the meeting about it where it was uh, pitched to the network, which I didn't realize was involved in so many meetings. I didn't realize the network was so heavily involved in hearing and having influence over the re direction of the show. Yeah, oh, I thought the same thing when you were saying that. I didn't realize that they were in the nitty gritty so much. They're, they're in the nitty gritty. I mean, you know, because they 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 want to, you know, it all is sorted out ahead of time before because you don't want to write scripts and outlines and then have people pull them apart mm -hmm. because that we have to move so quickly. We have to work so quickly that once something is OK, this is what we're doing. That's what we're doing now. There are times when I mean, you guys must have noticed during covid that characters suddenly disappear from trials or people who would definitely be at this party oh, yeah. suddenly like it's like oh maxie's so sorry she can't be here or you know mm -hmm. whatever you know an, a new actor playing a role mm -hmm. there's just you know and and the reason we have so many recasts is because very often where the episodes would air before we would have time to shoot the episodes with the with the true cast members mm -hmm. you know because once people get if they're you know if they've been a close contact to, to someone who may have a positive COVID test, you know, they, they are also not allowed to work. Yeah. And, and that would be a 10 day quarantine, you know? Is that what's going on with Chad? Because I don't know the young man's name. I forgot his name, <laughs> but you know, the young man from Young and the Restless, Noah playing him, right. yeah. which is very yeah. interesting that, you know, such a recognizable cast member from another show I mean, he is just so reckoned. I, I pop in and out of General Hospital. I'm not a consistent, really, viewer, but I know the Young, cast yes. there pretty well. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it's like as soon as he was there, I was like, oh, it's Noah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, I, I, I think I think the thing that they wanted was someone who knows the genre and who can do it. It's like a couple of years ago, we had to replace Elizabeth for a couple of episodes and they got... Martha Madison, who was Belle on Days of Our Lives. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's always interesting when you have someone from another show that you get to work with uh, and, and put them through our machinery, you know? Mm -hmm. But yes, unfortunately, Chad was unable to come in, you know, and, and we are, the episode would have aired before we even got back from our break. So it was important that we bring in Robert for those episodes. And I know Kelly... You know, we've had to replace a bunch of people. Kelly Monaco had to be replaced. Uh, Nancy had had an operation for a, a, a disc in her back. And, and we knew that we were going to have to do this heavy stunt stuff where she was going to be thrown around by Harmony. And that's why we had to get Stephanie in mm -hmm. to replace Nancy for, for that. Mm -hmm. Because the writers couldn't rewrite there was not the end of time. that storyline. It was so, it was too important that that everything happened the way that uh, you know with harmony and and the violence of of that end you know yeah yeah, yeah. Well, that makes a whole lot of sense you get, the the show has to continue on and and yeah when you guys are on such a, a tight time constraint it's good to have the network right there right away in case they got a problem and uh, yeah you got to find replacement people I think that uh, casting on GH you complimented it earlier I think has been uh, spot on when it comes to these temporary people to come in to to fill the gaps um, when it comes to like Taggart you know we had like essentially two Taggarts there for for a little while a tale of two Taggarts <laughs> you know <laughs> um, but ultimately it, it, it all came together and it worked and it was still a cohesive and coherent story so I'm, I'm happy yeah. with the result. We used to, you know, the, the thing is, whenever you have, whenever you have a baby character, we all, we often try to hire twins, yeah. So that you know, if one is unable to do it, we can bring up the other one. But maybe we should have uh, two people playing all the parts. Might, might as well. Might as well. <laughs> You'd be able to get twice as much done. 
Yeah. <laughs> you get get six months ahead like that other show. Um. <laughs> yeah. What are you guys right now? Well, we just started a three week break. So we had been getting as far ahead as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we're about five weeks ahead of air. Okay. So that we have three weeks now that we're down. Okay. And I think all the shows have been edited up through our second day back from break. And uh, there are some shows that are that maybe have a few pieces not done. I know right before the break, we were doing some episodes that are, are like a four or five day arc. And I know we did half the scenes from these two episodes that I was working on and the other half are being done when we come back from the break. And um, so, and in fact, I, I you know, we, we had a situation a couple months ago where Brick was on the show and Brick was in a parking garage and he was trying to get Jason out of prison or something and Britt was helping break Jason out and they go down into the parking garage and Jason got shot yeah. as the car was pulling out. And Cameron and might Cameron have done it. came in and he found the gun and he looked at the gun and then Jordan came in and he said, she said, Cameron, put your hands up. And, and, and suddenly they thought that Cameron was the one who shot someone at the car. Mm -hmm. and, and the funny thing about that episode was we had to shoot Brick on one day, but Cameron was unavailable for two weeks. <laughs> so we had to shoot all the Cameron part of the show two weeks later. And so you put this, you put it together in the edit and you, I don't, I don't think anyone ever noticed mm -mm. that was not done on the same day. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. The magic of Hollywood folks. <laughs> it I must be so lucky keeping it straight. Anything like that, actually, you know, as a viewer, I've never noticed anything like that where it's like, you can tell. Or maybe we have, but we're just like, oh, that they 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 combed their hair differently when they did that pickup shot. But we didn't yeah. know that it was actually six weeks later. <laughs> right. It's true. <laughs> That's the best when someone comes in. I, I think I think recently one of our actors had an episode that was a trial, and then the next day was the trial again, but there was a two week break in between and the actor got his hair frosted. And uh, he got frosted tips. So the, the the producers made him cut his hair in the morning and then they just made it look not <laughs> Bet that was Ken. <laughs> Bet it was Ken. <laughs> Bet it was Ken. <laughs> it wasn't Ken. No? Hmm. I'll never tell. It was Steve Burton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Oh my I gosh. Miss you, oh, well, thank you, Fido. I want to thank you so much for, for sitting here and having this conversation with us today. I mean, the insight into just your life. Uh, come, uh, the, the chat said that you need to write an autobiography, they would buy it. So, you know, there, there's an avenue for another income stream for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, like you have time, right? <laughs> exactly. Just, you know, a paragraph in between episodes. <laughs> uh, but thank, well, thank you so much you. for you know spending this thank, time with us and, and talking with us. And absolutely, and you're welcome to come back anytime if you want to become the. I third want to just show my my shirt before oh, yeah. we leave. A classic GH shirt, old school oh. GH shirt. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That was um that was swag. The first year I got there, they they gave this out to everyone for Christmas. Okay. My, thank you so much for your year. swag. <laughs> uh, well, um, you're, you're a million percent welcome to come back anytime you want. You can get, ch jump in the chat whenever you want, and uh, and we'll definitely have you back on again to talk about the next big legendary episode that you helm. Um, <laughs> so, Thank you. Yeah. Hey, uh, what, what would you say, just in closing, the, the, the thing that we should be looking forward to the most in the next five weeks? Gosh, you know, it's, it's all such a muddle in my mind, but I would say... <laughs> I would say what, you know, gosh, I, it's, it's, all it all it. goes in one, e one ear and out the other, you know? It's, it's just all <laughs> incredible. It's all too good to yeah. measure against each other. I understand what you're saying. I, mean, I, I think, uh, I think you should beware of drinking lemonade that you don't know where it comes from. Well, there we go. Be careful. You don't drink. know if, if you're not, if you didn't prepare your drink, don't drink it. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, people of Port Charles, male and female alike. Careful out there. It's true. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Lo Lovelace is looking forward to you uh, killing Peter for a third time. So, you know, go to <laughs> go, uh, home happy with that. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, people just gushing over you and, and just say, saying thank you for your time, your, your, your effort, your dedication and the depth of your passion for General Hospital and the work that you provide for us. So thank you. Well, I, I mean, we thank the audience for sure. We, we you know, we, we do it for you and we do it as a mutual love of the show. All right, I'm getting back on that elevator. You guys can join me. We're going to hop into our cars, tune our radios to previous episodes of the 10th Floor Podcast. You're going to subscribe to this channel and like this and comment on this and all that kind of stuff because it helps us. And, uh, you know, go home and spend time with your families. I've been Matt. I've been Kat. And that's been Fido. And we'll catch you <laughs> next time right here on the 10th Floor. Goodbye, everybody.